Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, I have something new to let you know about, and that is that uh, I've added a YouTube channel for the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. And in case you're wondering, and as much sense as this would seem to make, it is not a YouTube channel for video theater episodes. The main reason being that pretty much all of our video theater episodes, they're public domain videos, and somebody's already uploaded them to YouTube. So there's just not any point in me doing it. It is actually an upload of our earliest episodes from back in 2009, and uh, we'll continue going forward with as many as we can get out there. Uh, It's been a growing trend of people actually using YouTube to listen to music and other non-visual items, which may seem a weird use for a video uh, service, but... It's what people use it for. So we're trying to see if we can perhaps attract new audience as well as find a way to uh, kind of create a a different way to access our archives. Uh, Eventually, once we get a full series uploaded, then we'll uh, use the playlist feature so that people would be able to listen to, say, a full uh, season like right in a row or a full uh, particular series or particular series run. Like we'll have a playlist for each specific uh, Johnny Dollar, uh, depending on how far we get into this thing. And we'll keep adding videos at least for the next six months and just see what type of results we get. You can check out our new YouTube channel at youtube.greatdetectives.net. That's youtube.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Not Beat. The original air date, June the 19th of 1950. And this one is Vincent and the Painter. Wheaties presents Night Beat. On stage tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, Night Beat, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentation. Night Beat. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. My stories start in many different ways. This one began with an old man's fury and ended with the murder of a dream. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Get up in the morning and get real close to a bowl full of these little golden flakes. See if it isn't a wonderful morning, because Wheaties are fun to get up to. Bright, crisp, friendly little flakes of whole wheat. And they're fairly crackling with vitamins and minerals to help you work happy all morning long. Shake on some strawberries, or bananas if you'd rather. Pour on the milk, and you've got it. Breakfast of champions. Try them. See how Wheaties at 7... And help at 11. It was one of those half-spring, half-winter nights. I tried to convince myself that the tingling in my toes was youth on the march, but it was only the stone corpuscle slowing up. So I'd almost decided to go back to the office and do a human interest story on the H-bomb when I noticed where I was on one of those streets lined with cheap tenements. In front of one of them, a taxi stood at the curb. The driver was shaking his finger under the nose of an old man who shivered in his shirt sleeves. I moved closer. I tell you, you ain't going no place, Pop. You run a bill of six bits. It's on the meter. But I will pay you as soon as I can. Sure, sure. 
ten to one. You ain't seen six spits in the last year. But you must take me to where I want to go. You must. You ain't getting back in my hat. But you've got to take me. I am going to get... Okay, I asked you nice. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, take it easy, both of you. This ain't none of your business, mister. I heard you arguing. Please, it's getting late. I've got to go. He ain't going in my cab. Why not? What'd he do? Now, look. Since you stuck your nose in okay, I'll tell you. He gives me a call when I'm cruising. I pick him up. He gives me an address. I get almost there, and he tells me to come here. Here. Well, what's wrong with here? Mister, look at this crummy joint. Look at the guy. No hat, no coat. He gets out. I ask for the six bits and find out he's got no dough. Oh? Is that right? Yeah, but he will get paid. I will get some money. Sure, he'll win a sweepstakes, but I can't wait. Here, here, here. Here's your money. Huh? You paying for it? Yeah, I'll pay for it. That make everything all right? I will give it back to you someday. I'll give it back. But don't let the driver Pop, go. I got news for you. I'm practically in St. Louis. He's all yours, mister. You paid six bits for him. No, no, make him wait. Make him... Take it easy, Tom. Come on, come on. Settle down. He's gone and I didn't do it. You live here? Yeah, I had to come back for something. Well, look, we... We'd better get you to your room. It's cold. You've got no coat. But I have to go. You see, I must... I must kill Miss Gleason. That's what he said. He had to kill Miss Gleason. But somehow I couldn't take him seriously. He looked too gentle and too human. Anyway, he let me take him up four flights to an attic room. He opened the door and he turned on the light... He hesitated for a moment, and then... I'm sorry, there's... There's no chair. That is uh, one you can use. Oh, forget it, Bob. Fine. You got a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. Paints, brushes, canvas, they yours? Well, yeah, you see, I paint. Oh, an artist? No, I'm afraid I'm not worthy of being called that. But you did all these paintings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone? Hmm? Ever sell any of them? No. Oh, I see. No, you don't. I didn't paint them to sell. Painting became the only way I, I could speak. The world is not a very nice place sometimes. But I could change that by a bit of color. The stroke of a brush, the... Go on. Yeah. I'm not mad, am I? <laughs> Well, that depends on how we define madness, Mr. Uh... Uh, Weiman, Alfred Weiman. Spent a lot of money on all this, Mr. Weiman. Every penny. And you didn't have 75 cents for that cab? I would have paid him. He, he, he could have had a picture. Look, you take one. Here, here's uh, one I finished just last night. Well, I... Do you like it? Well, I, I'm no judge of art. But you must be. You, you are the only person who has... Never laugh. Not like Miss Gleason. Oh, yes, Miss Gleason. You remember what you said downstairs? Yeah. I, uh, I don't think you meant it. I did. Then, don't you see, Mr. Uh... Stone, Randy Stone. Oh. Go ahead, what were you going to say? I wanted to punish her. She had me discharged because I knew what she did. Only I knew it, Mr. Stone. Now, what did she do? She killed Vincent. What's that? I know she did. She killed him and put him in the basement. What are you talking about? That is why I wanted to kill her. Why didn't you go to the police? One would take my word against hers. Look at me. Where is I... she now? Her home. I was going there. To kill her? Yeah. Where does she live? Why? Well, I'd, I'd like to talk to her. Uh, you don't believe me, do you? Well, I'd like to get a few things straight. No, please believe me. She killed Vincent. She'll say she didn't. But I know. All right, Pop, all right. Now, if I go to see her, you've got to promise me you'll stay here until I get back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I will wait. All right, fine. Now, give me her address. <laughs> Why didn't I go to the police? Well, with what? Wyman's story? I don't think I believed him then. But funnier things have happened to me, maybe because I looked for them. A half hour later, the clerk in a very shishi apartment hotel sent my name up with the urgent tag on it and the fact that I was from the star. Yes, Miss Gleason would see me. And did. 
Mr. Stone, may I see your credentials? Why, sure. There you are. I see. Just why are you here? I told you. About Vincent. I... I don't know of Vincent. And I... Ever know anyone named Alfred Wyman? Alfred... Wyman? Yeah, that's the name. What has he got to do with this? Everything. He, uh... He told me about Vincent. Why, he's mad. A lunatic. Is he? Miss Gleason, when I first saw him, he was on his way here. Here? He was coming here? That's right. Now maybe you'd like to talk about Vincent? Suppose... Suppose you talk about him, Mr. Stone. You seem to know all about it. Wyman told you, didn't he? Hmm. You're a very cool person, Miss Gleason. Do... Do I have any reason to become hysterical? Well, some people would think murder was reason enough. You said murder? Yeah. Just exactly what did Wyman tell you? That you killed Vincent. And did he tell you what... what became of Vincent? Yeah. You, uh, put him in the basement. And now that you have all the facts, what do you intend to do about it? No. Call the police. Oh, of course. That's the logical thing to do, isn't it? Well, Mr. Stone, there's the phone. Call the police. You seem very sure that I won't. Go ahead. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, before you're connected. Yeah. Have you thought that all this may make you look ridiculous? Meaning what, Miss Gleason? Put down the phone, please, for a moment. Now what? Since you seem to have concerned yourself with this, you may as well continue. If you want to, that is. Do you? What's on your mind, Miss Gleason? I want you to come with me. Where? Are you afraid, Mr. Stone? Of what? Maybe of what you'll find out. General Mills is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. You know, I wish I could stop in and see you folks. Oh, I, I wouldn't stay long, but I'd like to just step in with a box of Wheaties and open it up and pass them around. You know how good they are? <laughs> Golly, my three-year-old eats them right out of the box like peanuts. There's a kind of nut-like taste to Wheaties, you know. It's the whole wheat taste. It's good. I suppose that's one reason why more people eat Wheaties than any other whole wheat flakes. Oh, they're, they're awfully good for you, too, of course. There's whole wheat energy in every crisp little whole wheat flake. Vitamins, too. Minerals, too. Well, go ahead. Have your Wheaties and admit you eat them for the fun of it. Get yourself a package of Wheaties one of these days, like tomorrow. You don't have to stop and think, these are good for me. Just put on the milk and the strawberries and think, Ah, this is real eating. That's Sweeties. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast for you. Have some. And now, back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. It was a strange ride in the cab with Miss Gleason. She watched me with a peculiar little smile on her face as though she were amused at a joke. There was no concern at all. Just an icy coldness and a confidence that disturbed me. Then the cab pulled up in front of the address Miss Gleason had given. We got out and walked up a flight of marble stairs. Surprised at coming here, Mr. Stone? Bender Art Galleries. There's a night bell there. Ring it. The night watchman will be here in a moment. So what do we do here? You want to see Vincent? Very well. I'll... Oh, here's the watchman. It's Miss Gleason, Charles. Open the door, please. You... You forgot something, Miss Gleason? No, Charles. Anything I can do, Miss Gleason? This gentleman and I are going to the basement. Basement? Yes. Please turn on the lights down there. Sure, Miss Gleason. 
He'll be on by the time you get there. Thank you. Oh, Charles. Yes, sir? As soon as you turn them on, come into the basement. Right away, Miss Gleason. Well, Mrs. Stone, coming. You first, Miss Gleason. Certainly. This way. Lights are on. Shall I go first, Mrs. Stone? I insist, Miss Gleason. Everything all right, Miss Gleason? Yes, Charles. Quite all right. Come along, Mr. Stone. I, uh... The stairs are kind of steep, mister. You're not used to them. you fall. I'll sort of watch my step. You want me to stay, Miss Gleason? For a moment, Charles. Well, Mr. Stone, what do you see? The, uh, the basement. Anything else? No, nothing. You're not looking in the right place, Mr. Stone. Over there to your left, on the floor. What is all this? Leaning against the wall. That picture? Go over and look at it. Can you read the signature on it? It's a print. A cheap print. But read the signature. Vincent... Vincent Van Gogh. All right, Charles. That'll be all, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Gleason. Now, Mr. Stone, do you realize how big a fool you'd have made of yourself if you'd called the police? This, this is Vincent. That is Vincent. Why didn't you tell me before? I wanted you to see it with your own eyes. You took Wyman's word against mine, believed him. I wanted to make you look and feel as ridiculous as this whole idiotic thing is. Now, good night, Mr. Stone. I don't think so. What? He said you had him discharged, did you? Yes. Why? What's this Van Gogh print got to do with it? He'd become a nuisance. An old fool. All I saw was a pathetic old man. Get out of here. First, tell me why Wyman was fired. He was a guard here. It was his job to see that people kept their hands off the paintings. But he'd become a nuisance. Yesterday, I happened to go into one of the rooms. Wyman was there, speaking to one of the customers. A thing he had absolutely no right to do. No, please don't buy it, Mr. Evans. It is not good. It is cheap and tawdry. Look, look at the tricks he uses. Tricks? <laughs> There's no depth. It is shallow. Wyman. Wyman. Uh, oh, yes, Miss Gleason. Please come here. But I'm talking to Mr. Evans. Uh, I, I was just leaving, Miss Gleason. <laughs> Mr. Evans, if you'll just wait, we'll talk about the Willoughby picture. Uh, I don't think I want it now. But Mr. Evans... Surely you don't think Wyman knows anything about... I don't know, Miss Gleason. You seem to hit the nail on the head. Painting is shallow. Good day, Miss Gleason. Wyman, how dare you? Well, I, I only did what I felt was right, Miss Gleason. You meddling idiot. I've had enough of this. You come with me. But, Miss Gleason... Go on, go to Mr. Temple's office. Yes, ma'am. How dare you criticize a painter like Willoughby? He... But he is not a good painter. What do you know about it? I know he's not good. And he doesn't feel oh, what he paints. Miss Gleason. Oh, I've got to talk to you, Mr. Temple, about Wyman. Wyman? Oh, not again. Uh, please, Mr. Temple, I did nothing He did but... nothing but keep Mr. Evans from buying the Willoughby. Oh, ridiculous. Mr. Evans wouldn't listen to what Wyman uh, has to uh, say. But he did. He, he knew what I was trying to say. Mr. Temple, Wyman has made me look ridiculous for the last time. This is the last straw. I'll go to the no, board. No, Miss Gleason. I'll if... not put up with it. And the board won't like to hear that the Willoughby hadn't been sold because this fool... Miss Gleason, remember, there's an exhibition of Willoughby's paintings tomorrow. We have enough to do without bothering... Either this man is discharged or I'll resign and tell the board why. You seem to forget this is a business, Mr. Temple. Are you worried about business or your own feelings, Miss Gleason? Mr. Temple, I warned you. I'm going to the board. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Wyman. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid Miss Gleason is right. We'll have your check for you this afternoon. You were warned several times. Uh, I know, Mr. Temple. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Temple. It was a distinct pleasure, Miss Gleason. Now, both of you leave me alone. I'm busy. You had this coming, Wyman. Uh, you think I care about the job, don't you? But I don't. I only care... But... but uh, where is it? Where is what? What's the matter with you? The Van Gogh. 
the one I hung there. You? You hung that cheap print? What did you do with him? Where is it? What did you do with it? I had it put in the basement. You destroyed it. You killed Vincent. You and people like you, you laugh. You won't understand what a great man is trying to say with his art. You killed Vincent, and now you want to kill me because I understand. But you can't, and you won't. I will kill you first. Martin! Samuel, come here, quickly. You killed him because you couldn't understand him. You killed him. Martin, Samuel! I will kill him. Get him out of here. It's crazy. Get him out. That's all there is to it, Mr. Stone. Mm -hmm. That's all, but uh, what happens now? How do you mean? Well, to Wyman. You call him a lunatic, you know. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just sick, but he can be cured by sympathy and understanding. Why don't you try those, Miss Gleason? I don't care to discuss it anymore. Uh, just a minute. You know what he does? No, and I care less. He paints. He... he paints? Yes, every night. <laughs> His room is filled with paintings he did because they made him feel good. Masterpieces. I don't know. I, I, I guess not, but that's not the point. What is the point, Mr. Stone? The point is he was lonely, and he made a world of his own, and he lived in it. He did those paintings because they were his only expression. They took him out of a bitter and unfeeling world that rushed past him too fast, too fast for him to share in it. And maybe he's right, Miss Gleason. Maybe we did kill men like Van Gogh because we didn't understand or didn't want to. Admit just once that you understand and like something different. and You've set yourself apart. You're a curiosity. You're as mad as he is. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Gleason. I think that's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me. Good night. Oh, sure, it did me a lot of good to tell Miss Gleason off. It did Alfred Wyman a lot of good, too, but not much. I had to go back to his rooming house to tell him that he was mad and the rest of us were sane. I went up the stairs, but when I knocked at his door... You're looking for Wyman? Yes, I am. He's here, isn't he? Not much, he ain't. I put him out. You what? Put him out. When? Oh, about an hour ago. You a friend of his? Yes, I am. Why did you put him out? I'll show you. Nearly burned down my house, he did. Look at this room. I, I ain't going to get the smell out for days. He burned everything. Like as not, he'd have had us all roasted in our beds if I didn't smell the stink this stuff was making. All of his brushes, his paints, his canvases. Why? Did he say Why? Mister, if you're a friend of his, you'll go after him with a rope. I asked you why he did this. Did he say? Sure, sure. He said it was a joke. That it was going to be a big joke. And then I chased him out. Joke? What did he mean? Could you understand what he meant? Yeah, it's two in the morning. Even if it wasn't, I couldn't make out what that loony was talking about. Which way did he go? Oh, up the street. He, he took something with him. Never mind that. Do you know where he might be? You know, uh, Miss Gleason? Gleason, yes. Why? Well, he might have gone to see her. Because he said the joke was going to be on her. I got to a telephone fast, found Miss Gleason's number, and called it. Miss Gleason? Yes? Who's that? Stone, Randy Stone. What? Mr. Stone, I'd like to know... Uh, just a moment, listen to me. Are you all right? Beyond the fact that I'm rapidly growing to hate you, I am all right, yes. Now, will you please... Please listen to me. I can't find Wyman. Isn't that too bad? I'm trying to tell you he might be on his way to see you. See me? Why? Well, I don't know, but if he shows up there, he you... He won't get past the clerk downstairs. Well, keep your door locked. I you. Under the bed. Please, Miss Gleason, this is serious, or it might be. Are you trying to say that ridiculous old fool will try to harm me? Yes. If you want it straight, yes. Did you hear me? I certainly did. And I think it's nonsense. Now I'm going to hang up. Miss Gleason. I'm going to hang up, but before I do, there's one more thing. Please make a determined effort to live your life without me. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. 
That click in the receiver was very final, and it made me feel a little foolish. After all, what could Alfred Wyman do? Killer? I didn't know, but what was his big joke, and when would it happen? At 3.30 in the morning, I gave up trying to find him. I went home, I fell asleep at 5.30, and I didn't wake up until after 11. And with daylight, it all seemed a little silly. But like the proverbial sore tooth, I had to bother it. I put in a call to Miss Gleason. She wasn't in her apartment. So I headed for the one place I hated to go to, the Bender Art Galleries. I had a funny feeling I'd learned something, something I didn't want to learn. There was a strange excitement there. People milled around, pushed together in little groups. I looked around for Miss Gleason. She wasn't there. And then I saw Charles, the night watchman. I went to him. Charles. Charles. Yes, sir? Oh, you're the man. Yes, that's right. Last night. Look, uh, where's Miss Gleason? Why? Where is she? Miss Gleason is is in the basement. Where's Mr. Temple's office? Right there, sir. That door. Thank you. Of course, of course. We're doing all we can now, and I'll let you know. Well, goodbye. Mr. Temple. Yes? Oh, who are you? Randy Stone, Chicago Star. Well, there's nothing I can tell you now, so please wait outside with the other newspaper man. Why, what's happened? What's... Well, where were you? Well, where's Miss Gleason? Where is... Mr. Temple, I... Oh. You! Oh, Miss Gleason, I never thought I'd be glad to see you, but I am. Now, what the devil is going on, Miss Gleason? Did you... Yes. Did... The Willoughby painting was in the basement. Someone took it there. Well... In the basement? The Willoughby? Uh, Mr. Temple... Thank goodness it's been found. If it had been stolen, it... well, who on earth put it in the basement? If I tell you, will you tell me what's happened around here? Don't you know? Uh, what's happened? Well, we were to exhibit Willoughby's latest painting. But when I pulled aside the drapes... Just a moment. This was in its place. Instead of the Willoughby, this painting was hanging. Unsigned. <laughs> Mr. Stone, you seem to know more about this than we do. Yes, I do. Mr. Temple, a man named Alfred Wyman, played a joke on you. He painted this. Wyman? Yeah. That miserable... Of course, he had a key. He could get in the back way before anyone... It was a joke on you, Miss Gleason. Willoughby in the basement... Where is he now? Where's Wyman? I don't know. I... Left word to call me in case he's located. But his painting... It's a I... harmless joke. A joke? Yes. He burned everything else he had. He left this for you. He... Oh, excuse me. Hello? What? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, for you, Mr. Stone. Oh, thank you. Hello. Yeah? What? Oh, all right. Uh, thank you. What is it, Mr. Stone? That idiotic old man has made us a laughing stock with his daubing. He's got to be confined. I wouldn't worry about that, Miss Gleason. He's dead. Dead? He killed himself. His body was found in the park this morning. Well, I'm... I'm sorry, of course. Yes, uh, bitter tears are running down your cheeks. Well, I had no idea he... No I, no, I guess not. Neither did I. Maybe you're not to blame, Miss Gleason. Maybe no one is. Maybe it was just his way of protesting against a world that gets a little smothering sometimes. If you don't mind, I'll go. I'll take this with me. Oh, wait, Mr. Stone. Yeah. Why do you want that painting? Why? I don't know. Is it yours? Well, no, I, I guess not, but it's, it's well, the only one. Well, then please woman. leave it. I never uh, wanted Wyman fired. Now everyone's going to blame me. I was only doing... Doing what you thought was right. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe you were. Let's forget it. And... Well, I, I can't, Mr. Stone. You see, it, it wasn't so much the disappearance of the Willoughby that disturbed me. It, it was this painting. This painting? What about it? Why, it's great, Mr. Stone. Truly great. Well, it was a big joke, all right. But on whom? Was it on Wyman himself? I think not. On us? Well, isn't it always? It's a joke that's been going on for years and years and will never stop. It's played a thousand times and we never learn to dodge the gag. We never see it coming. The joke that we never appreciate the sane people until it's too late. Copy, boy. You are listening to Night Beat on the Wheaties' Big Parade. 
Say, Frank. Yeah, yeah, what is it, Frank? Every time I did the commercials today, you were grinning at me. What's up? Well, nothing, but uh, you seem to be having so much fun doing those Wheaties commercials, I'd kind of like to try it sometime. Fine, Frank, right ahead. Well, uh, I can't do it like you, but uh, all I know about Wheaties is they taste good and I like them. What is it makes them taste so good, Frank? Well, I guess it's the whole wheat in Wheaties. Why, if you'd stand out there in a wheat-filled field soaking up that good sunshine, I bet you'd... Yeah, I know, I'd get sunburned. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, Wheaties are toasted, too. Makes them crisp, gives them kind of a nut-sweet taste. That's one of the reasons you like Wheaties so well. Mm, Yeah, well, you're probably right, but, you know, like I say, all I know about Wheaties is they taste good and I like them. That's what just about everybody says about Wheaties, Frank. That's exactly why Wheaties are America's favorite whole wheat flakes. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis and edited by Larry Marcus. Tonight's story was written by Russell Hughes with music by Frank Worth. The part of Wyman was played by Ben Wright. Jeanette Nolan played Miss Gleason. Others in tonight's cast were Wilms Herbert, Martha Wentworth, and Larry Dobkin. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen also on Tuesday, that's tomorrow night, to the Penny Singleton Show on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Nightbeat came to you transcribed from Hollywood. Stay tuned now for Top Secret, starring Alona Massey on NBC. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Yet another sad and tragic story. But with a thought-provoking idea. And certainly there are a lot of people who could have uh, some sympathy with uh, Vincent and also with uh, many of the sentiments Randy uh, expressed. On a lighter note, if you were looking for a justification for the Hollywood stereotype of the dumb security guard, you get an idea what some of the thinking might be. You wouldn't want a smart security guard in a job like this who might be able to converse intelligently with the customer about something for sale. And that's definitely one advantage of following that stereotype, which is exactly one more than um, I thought there were before this episode. Well, now we do turn to listener comments and feedback, and uh, we have uh, comments from Joey, uh, who writes uh, in uh, regarding episode 2133, What a Gentleman, and Susan says, I love Randy Stone, and definitely his conduct in Girl from Kansas uh, was definitely very gentlemanly. And Francis says, one of my favorite episodes with a cameo performance from Gerald Moore thrown in for good measure. The best just got better. Thanks so much for your comments. We'll be back tomorrow with Inspector Thorne. And then join us again next Monday for another episode of Not Beat. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become...